Hello and welcome to today's Ninja Trader Ecosystem event, Day Trading Pullbacks with Tony Peterson of The Intentional Trader. My name is Thomas and I'm a platform representative here at Ninja Trader. Now, before we start the webinar, I have a few housekeeping notes. Now, this webinar is presented by Ninja Trader LLC, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the Ninja Trader trading software. Brokerage related questions should be directed to the Ninja Trader brokerage team using the phone number or email in your screen. And if you're new to NinjaTrader, please make sure you sign up for your free NinjaTrader demo with real market data. Our platform is always free for advanced charting, strategy backtesting, and trade simulation. And before I turn the mic over to Tony, it is important to understand that, that, there, that futures, foreign currency, and options trading contain substantial risk and not, is not suitable for every investor. It is possible to lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And also please remember that these trading sessions are not solicitation or recommendation, but simply educational in nature. Now, thank you again for joining us today. And without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome into the Ninja webinar room, Tony Peterson of The Intentional Trader. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everybody, and thanks for coming. I really appreciate uh, your taking some of your valuable time to stop in and listen to uh, what we have to say about pullback trading. OK, so what we're going to you know, I, I, I was a struggling trader for many years and I, I ended up finding an edge that uh, was seemed to be a somewhat unexploited edge. So today we're going to talk about day trading pullbacks from the trend. Um, we're going to actually talk about trends. Now we're going to see what happens inside of a trend. We're going to see, uh, we're going to talk about whether we're trading pullbacks or whether we're counter trend traders or how to define what it is that we actually do. We're going to talk about why pullbacks uh, why, why price pulls back from trends and it does it regularly. It does it every day. It does it in every market, all right? We're gonna talk about the requirements and conditions of trading pullbacks. We're gonna talk about the importance of measuring and keeping track of momentum and understanding momentum. We're going to uh, talk about the anatomy and the characteristics of our trades. And then at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna have a special offer. We also have an event, you see it uh, down here on the bottom right corner. We have an event coming up. Let me put this in the chat um, where we're going to actually do a training session on our most popular well, just a second here, let me move this up, on our most popular trade setup called the Rockstar. And uh, you can register for that at that link right there. All right, so if you've been trading at any, for any period of time, you can recognize this pattern. This is a very simple pattern. It's the very first one you probably learn when you start trading. But inside, so this is a trend, right? So inside every trend are more trends. It really just depends on your view of that trend, okay? So looking at that, original trend line. If I take a short, I mean, or if I, if I sell, am I a counter trend trader? Do you consider what I'm doing counter trend? What about if I took a, a, a buy order here? Is that trend or counter trend? All right, so we often get when we talk about that we trade pullbacks from a trend, we often get the question, 
are you a counter trend trader? And I really don't know how to answer that unless I know more about the question, which trend are we talking about? How long is the trend that you're talking about? Because we're actually just, just trading direction changes, okay? So that's really all we're trading. We don't really care which direction it's going. So our trades may actually take place in both directions. Um, it could be trend trades of a longer term trend or counter trend for a shorter term trend. It really doesn't matter to us because all we're looking for is an edge. We're just looking for the best opportunities to take a trade and to take a high quality trade setup that has a high probability of doing what we expect it to do, all right? So we don't, we're not gonna get caught up in any of the trend counter trend discussion because that really doesn't make any sense unless you understand in what time frame are we talking about a trend, okay? So just to clarify, we aren't really a trend or counter trend. We are pullback traders, correct, all right? So inside every trend, I said that there are a series of pullbacks. So why do we see these pullbacks? You know, it's really just the nature of the markets and the traders in the market. When people or institutions think price is too high, they begin selling to take some profits, right? So when price moves up real high, there are profit zones where traders start saying, hey, you know what? Price has moved a long way. I better take this opportunity. Well, you know what happens when people start taking an opportunity to take profits? Price pulls back. This eventually drives price down to the point where now the traders in the market start to feel the price is maybe a bargain. Maybe it's a good price. So maybe it's time to buy again. So there are price levels where this happens, and these are often influenced by the market makers. You've heard about the market makers, right? We all trade against them every day or with them every day. You can see it in the markets when they're active, right? You can, we can be in a, in a sideways market and suddenly something happens and everything goes crazy. And you're like, gee, what just happened, okay? You and I can't make the markets move like that. All of us together can't make the markets move like that. It's, it's these market makers, these companies that have the ability to move the markets with the money and the technology that they have, okay? So they're gonna determine when and how to move price in order to set up the markets in their favor. So let's take a look at that. Let's see how they do this. This is important to know, to understand why these pullback trades work so well, okay? So if you look at this, this uh, chart here, this will be a pattern or series of patterns that you will see on every chart, on every trading chart that is not one of the, you know, the Rinkos or one of those. It's anything that's a time-based chart. You're going to see this pattern repeated over and over and over again. Okay. So we can, you see down here in the bottom left where price is kind of channeled. This is and, and if it's down here when price is probably at a pretty good value, but the big boys, the market makers, can't influence the markets unless they own a larger majority of the shares that are available or the contracts or whatever. So very quietly, they start buying these shares up or contracts or whatever. They don't wanna make a bunch of noise. They don't want a bunch of people knowing what they're doing. They know every one of us have volume indicators on our charts. So as soon as we see a bunch of volume, we start thinking, oh, no, this, there's something going on. I need to be trading. So they don't really want you to do that. So they're going to quietly accu uh, start accumulating some assets. Okay. So this 
So this is this could be what's happening when we see channeling. Suddenly, price will just break out of that channel. And you see it every day. If you guys are sitting and looking at charts, any chart that you look at, you're going to see these little bars with a sudden markup, okay? Once again, this is a manipulation. Then we get into an area of distribution, okay? This is where the big boys are making their money. Once again, they've acquired all of those assets at a lower price, and now they're going to slowly sell them off at a slightly higher price or much higher price. Eventually, they're going to get to a point where they're able to suddenly, again, manipulate the markets, run it up until they dump all of their remaining assets, which they still have the controlling share over the markets. They still have a lot. They've already made their profits. Now they've managed to, to run price up with a, with a markup and with, and I have a whole webinar on more about this and it's on our website, on our YouTube, um, do a, uh, a search for, um, Volume spread analysis uh, and our video, I think, is the top video on YouTube on volume spread analysis, goes into much more detail about how this happens. So I'm uh, how this goes on. So I'm doing the very abridged version of this. So we're just going to say there is a markup, and you know there is because again, go look at charts, you'll see it. <clears throat> and then they do it again. Okay, so there's a markdown. They start accumulating when price is stabilized. People start thinking, okay, well. Maybe this is a good value area and they mark it up and they do it again and again and again, okay? Until there's a big markdown and then they set it up for the next round, okay? This is typical. It happens all the time, okay? So let's look at what pullback trading requires, okay? So we wanna trade the right after those, um, up thrust, but I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. What's required for pullback trading, okay? No predicting, okay? We don't need to sit there wondering what's gonna happen, thinking about what's likely to happen next, predicting what the markets are thinking, what other people are thinking, taking all the news and information that you can gather to try to second guess something that might happen in the markets, okay? We don't do any market analysis. In fact, in the trade room, we have this, we just call it waiting on the bus because that's about how much effort we put into our trading. If, if you were to go and sit at a bus stop and wait for a bus, how much effort are you putting into waiting for that bus? When that bus pulls up and it's your bus, all you do is just get up and get on it. We don't have to analyze traffic. We don't have to analyze uh, the state of what's going on or anything. We don't, we don't do anything. We sit and we wait and then we react, okay? We don't have to speculate. We don't have a crystal ball that we like to use. We don't have um, a bunch of talking heads uh, that want to tell us what to do or what we should do. Um, hope we have removed hope how many of you guys still put a trade on and hope that you end up with a winning trade when you when you enter the trade you hope see we we remove that okay hope is not a very good part of a trade plan okay we don't do any guessing, we don't do any hoping, we simply react to the conditions, okay? There are no confusing signals, okay? When you guys are trading, how often do you have maybe two, three, four indicators where you're, where you're looking at different conditions and you're trying to decide, is this a good place or time to put on a trade? Well, I've got these four indicators. One of them says no. 
The other one says a strong maybe. The other one says, oh, definitely, uh, um, you know, you probably should. And the other one says, yes. What do you do? How do you decide which combination of those indicators? Here's what I did. I would just take the ones that I, I would look at the ones that I wanted to look at so that I could get into a trade. Didn't matter that I was being warned by the other ones not to. I would say, okay, well, two of the four say go, so I'm going. Okay, that's how I made my decision because there was too many shades of gray to, to uh, make a trade decision, too many confusing signals. So pullback trading, the rules are real simple. It's the easiest trading system you'll ever find. All you need is a good plan and you need to practice with Ninja Traders Playback Connection. And now I know if you guys have used Playback in the past, you may have said, I'm not doing it anymore because it just doesn't work like I want it to. Well, first of all, it's what we have. Second of all, it's a lot better than it used to be. They have done a lot of work on it and fixed a lot of problems. So if you haven't used it lately, you need to try it again, okay? We have a very strong edge in our trading. But the flip side of having a strong edge like we have is you've got to execute. And the only way to get good at that is to practice. But the nice thing is we've already found the edge and we know that the practice you'll be doing will, do, will have value to you when you're trading, okay? So again, by reading a confluence of market conditions, all we do is react, okay? So we're gonna look at momentum. We're looking at order flow. We're looking at price being overbought and oversold. And we're looking at all of that so we can anticipate exhaustion, okay? So when price becomes exhausted and price has diverged from momentum, we have something special. We have a really strong edge. For those of you that don't know what divergence is, it's very typical for price and momentum to travel in the same direction, okay? To be, um, to be, uh, 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 together, to, to, to run together, sorry. Um, when momentum and price get out of sync with each other, for example, if price is going up, but momentum has actually already changed directions, price will try to catch up with momentum. This is probably the most powerful tool in trading but it's one of the hardest to trade because up until we came up with our divergence indicators, it's really hard to tell. So people just give up on it, okay? So let's talk about momentum traders, okay? And how important momentum is. So momentum is, is not just so you could say, you know, you don't wanna go, okay, well, when there's this much momentum, um, than the momentum traders. It's, it's not a fixed amount or percent of the market. It's relative to the recent past conditions in the market, okay? So if they go on and go back 10 bars, 20 bars, 50 bars, 60, you know, 120 bars, whatever. So momentum uh, traders will take advantage of a trend, but they're not trend traders. They trade level to level inside a trend, okay? They're trying to capture those strong moves that I was telling you about, okay? The ones that right after the channeling, you know, the accumulation or distribution, or even if there's no interest. You know, sometimes price is channeling because nobody wants it at that price and, and it's just channeling sideways, okay? So they're going to try to capture these strong moves based on these aggressive buyer or seller. It, it, it goes either direction of uh, bidding up uh, price or down and overwhelming one side of the bid ask spread and, and setting off this strong move 
in one direction, which is usually temporarily and over the short term spans. Okay. So as you look at this chart, it looks like a very typical chart. In fact, it's so typical that you've seen it before on most any instrument you've traded. Sometimes it'll look like this, going mostly in one direction. Sometimes it'll change directions. But under analysis, it's still the same set of patterns being repeated over and over again. So let's zoom into this pattern uh, that is consistently being repeated and analyze its parts, OK? So again, we're looking where price is channeling. This could be, like I said, low interest. It could be accumulation. It could be distribution. For us, this is when we're getting bored, OK? If we're watching the charts and we're wanting to trade, by golly, I want to trade. I'm a day trader. I'm, I should be trading. I want to take a trade. But you're sitting there. You're bored because the markets, you say, are slow. In your mind, you go, OK, things are really slow. So then, out of the blue, suddenly we break out of this channel. And the buying sentiment suddenly increases with a sudden bidding up of price, OK? This bidding up in price triggers the momentum traders to suddenly buy up as much as they can, as fast as they can, causing a sudden shortage, driving up prices even higher over the short term. Of course, there are those of us who see this, and because of FOMO, you see price shoot up like this. You're like, oh, it's going to the moon. I want to get into it. I got to jump into this. It's going to the moon. How can I miss this? And then all of a sudden, the buyers start becoming exhausted. Momentum traders dump everything as fast as they can before all the buyers are gone. And then the sudden oversupply drives prices down. OK? So momentum traders motto, in fact, the guy that that kind of invented and came up with, with uh, momentum trading. He said, this buy low, sell high thing. He's like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm going to buy high, sell higher. So they don't need to be in trades very long, particularly in this day and age, right? We all know about the quants and the, uh, the HFTs. Um, the, the market makers that can move the markets in milliseconds, right? Who can place orders that we can't do. So we all know about this and that it's, that it's happening in the markets and the exchanges allow it to provide liquidity to the markets so that you and I have something to do when we get up in the morning. All right. So we're going to, uh, so this gave me an idea. Right. I, I'm seeing this and I'm seeing it over and over and over again. The longer I look at charts, the longer I'm looking for an edge, the more I start seeing this repeated over and over and over again. This works um, inside any instrument, any market that is very liquid. OK, you want some volatility, you want some liquidity. It's not going to work as well in the bonds, in the treasuries, OK? Uh, I used to trade some of the treasuries with this, but it got very slow. Um, the trades took a lot longer. So we don't really trade the treasuries uh, with this in our trade room, although all of these conditions apply to the treasuries as well. You just may end up in the trade a bit longer than we do. All right, so I had this idea, okay? But what I, first of all, I had to take what I know about trading and that there's a, essentially three types of traders in the market. Those that do value analysis, which is, you know, base trades on analyzing the value of a company or an asset 
They study things like price earnings ratio and stock splits and acquisitions and earning reports and stuff like that, okay? So there's those types of traders. Then we've got the trend traders, okay? That use mostly the technical analysis to determine when we have a higher high or lower lows or two higher highs. Um, no real fundamental analysis, mostly technical analysis to determine at what point a trend is going to go and potentially stop and change directions, okay? And then we have the momentum traders that we're talking about, the guys that manipulate and trade these quick breakout, these sudden up thrusts or down thrust bars, okay? So here's a, here's a simple line chart of the pattern that we're talking about, okay? So down here at the bottom, you've got where price is undervalued. So there's, a, there's people are buying and selling and it's kind of undervalued but it may be just kind of drifting up or down and nothing really special going on. Then, it, so that it could be low interest, accumulation, distribution, whatever. Then the sudden up thrust, okay, of momentum where they're gonna buy and they're gonna sell, all right? And then we see this pattern over and over again. And this pattern establishes this trend. So once we get this up thrust, we may get into an oversold area or, or where price is at or over value, all right? And then it starts again. We have the momentum, we have buying and selling, it happens. It just happens over and over and over again. So I'm thinking, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh man, excuse me. I'm thinking, okay, well, there's three kinds of, of traders. There's these value analysis guys. That's not really my thing. Um, I wanna be a day trader and I don't wanna be in the markets for a long time. I don't wanna take these long-term trend trades. I had already established that in my seven year, uh, previous seven year before I became uh, a professional trader, I was the world's worst trader because I couldn't manage my emotions through trend trades. Um, I had also didn't know, because nobody told me that you can't make any money as a trend trader if you're a small lot trader or, you know, trade, you know, at least small number of, you know, single lot, small number of contracts. Nobody told me you can't make any money as a trend trader doing it that way. You have to be able to scale larger, larger uh, amounts. Excuse me, just a second. Hmm. I suddenly got a tickle in my throat. So and I obviously can't be one of these momentum guys because I don't have the, the kind of uh, money or technology that these guys have. So where's you know, what's left for those of us that are looking for an edge, right? What, what's left, okay? And I started looking at this and I started saying, well, wait a minute. We've got these areas on the other side of the momentum after these guys have done what they're gonna do and then they stop and set up for the next time they're gonna do it to us. The momentum traders, the market makers, the smart money are really not that interested in this area. They've just finished up their rounds. They're setting up the next round to go to the next level. So what happens is we're actually entering relatively safe shark free waters, at least for the short term. OK, so we want to trade the result of these guys. Um, having uh, uh, manipulated the market and getting ready to do it the next time, okay? So let's look at the anatomy of our pullback trades. Now, just because price is going up does not necessarily mean that it is something of interest to momentum traders, okay? 
it, but it's important for us to measure everything to know inside each bar so that we can determine when the momentum traders are being active, okay? So it is important for us to know that. So we're gonna measure each side, uh, uh, inside of each bar. Oh, thank you, um, Heinz, and any of uh, the, <laughs> Dirk Diggler, you, you said you were gonna do that, and I didn't believe you. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, so these are some of the folks from our trade room uh, stopped in to say hi, I guess. So the anatomy of pullback trades, okay? First thing we're looking for, okay? You look over here and you see this channel, okay? The first thing we're looking for is this breakout of a channel. That's going to give us an alert that something's going on, okay? Or, or at least get our attention. So we're looking at some momentum building. That's what this black bar turning uh, a darker gray to a lighter gray to a lighter gray, okay? This is telling us that we have some very strong momentum happening right now. Well, the reason we care is because momentum cannot be sustained. This is why we have pullbacks. Momentum cannot be sustained. The, the lighter those bars get, the more imminent the exhaustion. Okay, so then we're also wanting to look for the potential for exhaustion by seeing that price gets overbought. Okay, so here there's this pink outline. This is what we call our heads up indicator, our obos indicator. You don't have to look anywhere else. We don't have any oscillators. We don't have any wavy lines. We don't have any other lines, anything on our charts. This, this is it. Overbought, that's all I need to know. I know exhaustion is probably about there, okay? So then the momentum traders get triggered and this is what's important. This is called our speed tick. The momentum traders get traded and they start placing trades faster than retail traders can possibly trade. And they're doing this again because they have all the money and they have all the technology in order to be able to do that. So we're reading all of the trades, not, not the uh, orders, but the actual processed trades that are going through the exchange. And if it happens that these orders are going through faster than retail traders can trade, we're going to put what's called a speed tick. Nothing happens in our trade room without a speed tick, okay? So again, there's a heads up. The next thing we have is our pullback alert. This little, again, heads up display removes all kinds of indicators from your charts. And it gives you a yes, no answer to whether a condition or set of conditions exist. So now this is all we're going to see on our chart. This is telling us that the initial buyers on this bar are beginning to fail as the, um, the sellers are now coming in. All of that is inside that dot, okay? So we have a confluence of conditions suggesting we have exhaustion setting in. And then on the open of the next bar, we have our rock star. Our rock star is a thing that changed trading for a lot of people. This rock star has other indicators in it. I'm not gonna, I'll talk about this more on Saturday, but essentially this is telling us that we have a confluence of conditions, including divergence. Remember we talked about divergence where we know price is going this way. But we also know that momentum has already changed directions and we know that price will attempt to catch up with momentum. This is where we put the trade on right here, okay? So in this, in this example, we sold it, okay? So counter trend, I don't know. Which way is the trend going? I don't know, doesn't really matter. We found an opportunity 
that gives us a high probability of a pullback happening. And it happens over and over and over again. It's cyclical. That's another thing that makes this so awesome. It happens regularly. And the reason it continues to work, this is 13 years now we've been doing this, 13 years. We've been trading this exact thing. Some of the people that have been in our trade room have been coming in for almost that time, every single day to trade with us. And it keeps working because people keep reacting the same way with emotions. Okay. These guys know it. They can set us up. They can take our money and then they can set us up again. And they do it over and over and over again. All right. So, what are the characteristics of our trades in the trade room? Well, there's very little need for emotion control. I learned a long time ago that when it comes to controlling my emotions as it relates to trading, I suck at it. Horrible. Couldn't, just could never do it. I could try to do it for a little while, but really couldn't couldn't manage to hold it together for very long because I think about money all the time and money makes me stupid money makes me do stupid things um, makes me make bad decisions as it relates to trading so we have removed money from our trading we don't think about money anymore and we we've removed the need for emotion control or at least much of it because we're in and out of our trades really quickly, okay? Now, nothing repaints uh, uh, in what we do other than the momentum. And uh, I'll explain that more on Saturday if you need me to. Um, uh, momentum has to repaint because there's no way to determine when momentum actually starts until after it's been going for a while, right? You don't really have momentum. You think about momentum, think about a bicycle coming up over the top of a hill and then starting to gain momentum. You don't know when that momentum started exactly until you've been able to determine that momentum exists. So the Mo meter will go back and repaint the previous bars, which only does that to help us make a decision on the upcoming bars, okay? None of the other indicators repaint. Exactly at the instant that a condition exists, Boom, it shows up on the chart, okay, intra-bar, all right? All right, so there's no need for emotion control because we're in out of trades really quickly. You know, the longer you're in a trade in today's markets with all of the manipulation that's going on, the more speculative that trade becomes, the more hope becomes part of your trade plan, okay? How many of you go, well, shoot, I'm in this trade anyway. I might as well just stay in it and see what happens. Uh, Richard, here we go. I'm going to put this in here for you. And for those of you that came in late, uh, here is the link for Saturday. All right. So. We're in and out of trades quickly. We put money in the bank and then we sit back, we go back, we sit at the bus stop, wait for the next bus. So because there's that very little need for motion control, there's very low stress. You can come to our trade room. If you go to our website, theintentionaltrader.com, um, you can sign up for a free trial of our trade room. You can hang out with us and you'll see how relaxed and low stress it is. Uh, we can enter a trade and then we'll all start talking about something else or whatever. It's not it's not a high stress yelling and screaming and jumping up and down type of a, a of, of an environment. Um, again, we're back to yes and no decisions. No shades of gray. If this and this and this happens, enter the trade. If it doesn't, don't enter. That's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, I should, uh, I should have had that ready. Hold on a sec. I'm going to get that for you because, um, and I can get that here real quick. Here 
It's on our main web page, down at the bottom. Here, let me just give you this. And then you can scroll down to the bottom and sign up for our trade room trial. All right? Should I should have had that ready for you. The trade management is super easy. All right? There's no complicated trade management. You can be a single lot trader. You can be a multiple multi-lot trader. It doesn't matter. All right, single contract traders do just as well as multi-contract traders. You don't, uh, not like trend traders. Uh, I mean, you can't really trade trends with, as like I talked about earlier, with single lot. Every instrument we trade has the same set of rules and all the indicator settings are the same. You don't have to uh, trade things differently, all right? And a strong feature of what we do is that we do not focus on money. Again, you, you won't hear me talk about money in the trade room. No, we don't do trials for the indicators. We, we might someday, but for the last 13 years, we haven't really needed to. People that, that watch the indicators, uh, uh, I'm gonna show you here in just a second where you can actually see them traded live in our trade room uh, by 150 or more videos that you can watch of, of the indicators live in our trade room. So once you've used them, you'll realize that you know, there, there's no trial really necessary. Uh, yeah, but it's a system. Let me get finished with this and then let me um, answer a few questions, okay? So let me finish this up. So here is our YouTube channel where you can go to our uh, trade of the day videos. All right, so here's the YouTube channel. And if you go to the, uh, there is a, uh, a section called trade of the day. And oops, and we have, almost, uh, what is it, 158 videos there now. And they're all, they're just a couple minutes. And you can see, and they come right out of the trade room, okay? Because we record our trade room every day. And we um, then post those trade room videos for our traders uh, in the Pro Trader program. They get uh, in the members area, they have access to our daily trade room videos. So all of these things, all of these trades are taken live in front of the whole trade room. But I just go into the uh, video and I clip out the one, you know, the trade that I think people would be interested in seeing and then put that here on YouTube. So this is all live trading. This isn't something where I talk over a video or a trade that I did earlier in the day. It's all live. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about that. I never even heard of them. Trade devil. All right. Now, finally, all right. Uh, I know I've been getting emails and people wanting to get uh, this uh, special offer. They knew when they, it's funny how you, they, when they find out you're doing a webinar, it's like, oh, there's going to be a special offer. So I've been getting emails on requests for the special offer. Um, we're going to do 20% off of everything. For, for whatever purchase you decide uh, on our website, you can go to, here, I got this uh, link for you. All right, so the bundles are on the website. Those are by far uh, the biggest bang for the buck. The um, the Pro Trader program is basically everything we have plus everything we'll ever have. So we have a lot of people, uh, in fact, several of them here that are in our Pro Trader program that joined us many, many, many years ago. And uh, every time we develop something new, 
uh, to help us trade our pullback trade. Now, we don't develop things new to come up with new trade setups and new things that we can do and this uh, latest and greatest whatever. We do the same thing every day, day in and day out for 13 years. People that have left and then come back after a few years, they have been able to pick up right where they left off. Not Because nothing has changed other than we will develop new tools to help make what we do more efficient or better or easier or whatever. But what we do already has such a strong edge. We're not continually looking for different ways to trade, which a lot of people like because they're like, you know, more into the hobbyist part of day trading where they just like to see and learn lots of different things. We actually just, just show up, make a living, and then go home. That, and that's it. That's, that's all we do. All right. <clears throat> yeah. The, uh... All right. So, yeah, I'll answer some questions. <clears throat> if you asked one earlier that I didn't answer, um, I'm only going to answer a few today, uh, and I'll answer the rest of them on Saturday, if you can make it on Saturday. Um, yeah, the, the, there is a monthly fee for the trade room, but if you buy one of our packages, you get trade room time for free. So um, you can just go to our uh, store and you can see the trade room stuff there in the, in the store. I gave you that link. All right, check your, uh, I know it works. So check your spam folders. Uh, you should get something. Uh, it may take just a few minutes. I cannot do it right now, Emmanuel. I don't, I'm not even on the computer that has that on it. Um, but I'll be happy to show you uh, the trades on Saturday that we took on Friday. Any other questions? Yeah, we only sell indicators. We don't lease. Once you buy it, you own it. That's it. You get all updates for free forever. Yeah, and it will be recorded as long as you're registered. Uh, you will get a copy of the recording. Uh, the discount will last for, uh, I think I have it set for next, a week from this Saturday. I call out trades live in the trade room before I enter them. There is no room or reason for me to show me trading. And once you're in the trade room and watching and listening, you'll know what I mean. You'll see why. We use a one minute time frame. Um, the only thing I can say, Moshe, about um, buying something that doesn't work or it's, it's uh, you know, didn't work for you, ask questions. Ask a lot of questions. Ask other people that use the product. Um, ask the people selling if they can give you references. Uh, if they won't give you references and they say, oh, yeah, well, this is because it's about money and trading and, you know, we people's privacy and all that, that's a bunch of crap. That's not true. Uh, they don't wanna give you names because their stuff doesn't work. So um, uh, ask questions and I'll give you all kinds of references. All kinds of people have volunteered to talk to other people about our products and our services. And we have a lot of them. Um, yeah, we have PayPal. You can use their, their uh, six months credit, absolutely. Saturday webinar link. Let me put that in again. Okay. Why isn't that working? Okay.
<laughs> hey, John, we sold the RV. We're, we live in uh, uh, Dana Point, California now. So we trade in the trade room the uh, the ES, the 6E, which is Euro currency futures, the YM, the RTY, the CL, and the GC. Um, more stuff, obeyed. Uh, the extra income has more stuff. Yeah, but first you got to, Ernest, you got, first you got to figure out if you can find a, a system with an edge. Then once you learn that edge, you teach yourself how to uh, uh, grow your account. Over time, you grow your account, you add two contracts and you keep doing the same thing. And then you add three contracts and you, and you do the same thing. Your assumption is you will always only trade one contract. Yeah, it's hard to make a, a living at $25 per trade. Absolutely, there is no intentions of that, but it's a lot cheaper way to learn trading and work your way up to trading more contracts. And you take several trades a day, obviously. Yeah, PayPal, our PayPal does have the pay later option. Yeah, and it just, uh, some houses just burned down uh, up there, Scooter, uh, yesterday. Big mansions in Laguna de Gale. All right, I tell you what, um, I think Thomas wants me to kind of check out here. I appreciate you guys coming. I appreciate um, all the good questions. I will spend a lot more time answering questions on Saturday. So please come join us on South on Saturday. And again, thank you for coming. I want to thank Ninja Trader for sponsoring this awesome event. And I look forward to seeing uh, everybody real soon. All right. Bye bye now. All right. Well, I want to thank again, Tony, for taking the time to share with us today. If you enjoyed today's session, we hope you will join us for future webinars. We would like to remind you that the information provided was that of the intentional trader and not of Ninja Trader. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us here at Ninja Trader. <laughs>